So how are your stress levels these days? Mine could be better. I think everybody's probably could be better. Um, if you haven't seen my video uh, that I posted where I did a stress test and I did a body scan um, at a wellness center called Motion, you have to go check that out. I'll put the link up here. Um, this is actually my stress test from that appointment. So the reason why we measure stress first is because we believe that your brain is in control of everything. It controls your posture, it controls pain sensitivity, circulation, all of these things. And so anytime we have a discussion about your health, about longevity, we should be concerned that, about the state that the brain is in. Right. Right? So there are two main states that the brain can be in. The first one is your go mode. This is your fight or flight mode. Right? It prepares your body to either fight someone or something or run away. Right. Right. So a lot of You're tension. sympathetic. Yes, right. very uh, sympathetic nervous system driven. Now, that's really important for survival, but we shouldn't be in that state all day long, right? And I think a lot of people are. Yes, yes, especially in New York City. It's basically the stress capital of the world. Right? <laughs> we're um, really good at it. Yeah, yeah, right, we're really good. But keeping this sympathetic nervous system or this fight or flight response in check is the exact opposite. It's your rest mode. Now, when your brain is in this rest mode, this is where all the good stuff happens. This is where relaxation happens. Tissue regeneration happens. Cellular regeneration happens. Uh, digestion happens, right? Now, in the ideal system, your brain should be able to go from one state into the other seamlessly. And as a need arises, it should appropriately assess what it needs and choose the best response. But the brain is also in the, in the market for like learning and adapting, mm -hmm. right? So if the brain is constantly fed stressful stimuli, it's gonna bias or skew towards fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And the reason that happens is because your brain is all about survival. So if it can keep you slightly more on edge, slightly more fight or flight, when the inevitable stressful event comes up, you can respond that much faster. Right. But this is a, a, a big reason why people deal with chronic pain because their brain never shifts into that rest, relax mode where a lot of the tissue healing happens. This is why so many people, especially in New York City, struggle with sleep because their brain, even though their body is resting, their brain is on. So people, you know, they have insomnia, they stay up, they wake up several times during the night uh, just with all these racing thoughts, right? This is your stress fingerprint. This is what your stress looks like. Okay. Now, when it's we're pretty constant, <laughs> I have a little bit of. Uh -huh. Is this high or is this? This is so. This is reflecting a low variability, right? Which suggests that you are biased more towards stress. Why? Well, a I am. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so a system that has or shows low variability is very rigid. It's a little counterintuitive, but. The less variability your system has, the higher your stress. Oh. The easiest way to um, conceptualize this is if you've ever seen the uh, ECG of someone who just passed away, it flatlines. There's right. no variability. It's super rigid, right? On the opposite though, if you are biased towards rest, the graph will look something like this. Oh, you are kidding yeah. me. So big arcing sine wave. What? High degree of variability. Right? This means that your nervous system is flexible. It's oh. not stuck on one, it's not stagnant. It has the ability to shift from one end of the spectrum into the other. Right? Wow. What I was um, told was that I am a very shallow breather, which I kind of knew, uh, but now it's been con confirmed. I was asthmatic as a kid and I always blamed it on that. Um, but I really need to work on my breath. Um, my, the heart rate variability test should look more like this. It should be more like a, more ups and downs, but consistent. You want, you want the highs and the lows to kind of be as consistent as possible. So yeah, so I have some work to do. So what I've decided to do was to bring breath work more into my life on a consistent basis. I've been doing it, but I have done it, you know, periodically here and there, but never seriously as a habit. And so I want to, if I can reduce my stress levels, if I can improve my heart rate variability, 
that's going to cascade into other things, right? So that's going to prevent me from getting other illnesses in my body. So it really starts at the core with the breath and how much the breath can actually help with that sort of thing. So I'm excited to do this. Um, I'm partnering with a company called uh, Othership. Othership, I've also did an interview with the co-founders, um, Amanda and Harry, and you can watch that interview up there where we talk about the foundations of breath work and why it's so important um, and and critical really for a lot of our uh, basic health needs. So they have an app, as you can see, where I'm looking at the journeys right now. And so they have all different kinds of, they have hundreds of different um, breath work, different exercises running from like two minutes to 10 minutes to 20 minutes to an hour, depending on how much you want to do. So I am a beginner. So I'm going to start with baby steps because I want this to be consistent. And I think the most important thing about creating a habit is that you take the baby steps because you want to succeed. You want to get those, you know, those check, you know, those thumbs up. So those, those things that you can check off and say that I did it. So if you even do it for like two minutes, that means you did it, which is great. And it means that you're more likely to continue, right? So if you don't and you quit in the middle, you're less likely to continue. And that goes for me as well. So I am going to do the five day wind down. I'm going to join you. I'm a, I want you to join me rather. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into how the experience goes and I'll check in with you afterwards and see how I'm feeling and how I'm liking it. Um, and yeah, and I hope, and I'm encouraging you guys to come along with me and do it with me, um, or start your own journey in terms of how breath work, breath work can actually help you on your health. So let's go. So I just did the grounding vessel exercise and it's narrated it's guided which is really really nice I feel so relaxed right now actually and there's it's just only 10 minutes and it's amazing doing the box breath so the box breath is four in four hold and eight out it could be variations of that it could be four four and four or five five and five but there's something about counting the breath and focusing on that, that really does relax the mind. And I can see why this is so essential to, you know, getting a restful night's sleep or, you know, being able to just de-stress, right? So even in the middle of the day, if something intense is happening, you can use these exercises. So I'm excited to actually continue this and to continue to see how I feel um, inside and out. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. So I did a wind down. Uh, last night after I finished my day and I have to say that it really somehow weirdly centers you and just kind of you know I, I don't I think we really underestimate the power of our breath and how and that we breathe you know unconsciously like we're just breathing every day and not realizing that we're not utilizing in a way that we can really control our stress levels and so when I did it yesterday um, to lower, I just felt calmer, right? I just felt more relaxed. It's not necessarily, it didn't help me put me to sleep, but it really just helped just focus and just take, and it doesn't take that long, which is amazing. And then this morning, um, I tried the productivity. Uh, there's a productivity, there's a whole bunch, but, um, I tried a whole productivity, um, exercise and it is crazy it is you just like my fingers are buzzing my head is kind of buzzing um it's pretty pretty amazing and there's simple techniques there's box breathing breath um where you just go you do a count of you know it could be numerous things but a count of four hold for four and then out for eight um and then you can hold on the bottom for another four or five so it's there are different and then you do it faster right so it brings more oxygen and it's really important to um, breathe from your diaphragm rather than your up here in your chest and i think a lot of us including myself when we're breathing normally um we're just breathing from our chest and that's it just kind of raises the cortisol levels in our brain um which is our stress hormone 
So I think that, you know, I'm doing this and making it a habit is key. So I hope you will give it a try as well. Um, it costs nothing, right, just to, to learn how to breathe. And if you want something to help guide you, the guides in here are great. Um, and then, you know, you're doing it for a specific amount of time. Um, and then they lead you, which is great. And, and for beginners, if you're a beginner, definitely, I think guided is the way to go. I'm going to continue to do the breath work and see how, where it takes me because um, I definitely want to make this a habit in my life. And I think you should too. So this is day three. Um, last night I did the breath work meditation in bed and I have to say I really, really liked it. I, I love loved being, you know, kind of getting ready for bed um, and then being able to just go to sleep um, right afterwards and not having to like get up or whatever. I, of course, I like doing it sitting up as well. Um, but there was something really relaxing about doing it at night that I feel like I want it to become a ritual for me. Um, listening to the to the voices or whoever it is that's doing the exercise and and then being able to relax um, was really really nice and um, and then I got up in the morning and I did the productivity uh, breath work which again was like it's amazing how it just kind of invigorates your brain and it just kind of sets a really nice intention for the day right to to be able to do that breath work so I feel like not only is it physiologically really good um, it doesn't take that long and it just feels really good it just and it does that's that's the beauty of it right and so you're really doing something great for your body and for your mind and it doesn't take that long and it's not like um, you know, there's not the stress of meditation for those who have problems meditating because you're doing, you're just focusing on your breath. Um, so I hope you're trying it at this point. It's really, really amazing. Um, I feel like, yeah, having this as a part of your day, you know, two minutes, four minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, um, can really enhance how your day goes and how your day ends. So I'm on day four now of this breathwork journey to make it a habit in my life. And so I've been doing it every night and every morning. And last night, um, yesterday was kind of a very stressful day. I'm in the middle of this renovation um, at my house and there's just so much going on um, that it was hard for me to kind of slow down my mind. And I have to say that having something guided to help me with my breath and stuff really works. And so last night I did a little bit of a longer one. Um, it's this one the secret stress weapon. Uh, you can take a look here. And, you know, it, just to have those moments where you are very conscious of your breath and you're counting your breath and it kind of takes you out of whatever is, you know, taking up space in your brain. So if you are really stressed out um, or if you have problems going to sleep, I think that breath work might be a really great supplement to whatever else you're doing to kind of wind down. Um, and then in the morning doing the, you know, the different breaths. Um, so they, so some of the exercises have you doing quick breaths, like one, one second in, one second out, pushing in, pushing out, pushing in, pushing out where, and then all your fingers are tingling and your brain is tingling. Those are amazing. So I've been doing those in the morning and then resting at night. Um, so I, I've already kind of feel the effects where I look forward to it now, which I can't say that happened before. Um, so I can already sense this. Um, I feel the positive effects essentially. And so, yeah, so tomorrow is the last day, but I think it's the last day of this just particular exercise and then the beginning of a longer ritual for me. So it's been a couple of days since I last recorded the other video, and that's because I'm now in Florida. Um, I got this last minute gig to shoot a TV show. And so the great thing about it is that wherever I go, I get to take my apps with me, right? And that's the, be the beauty of doing something like this. Um, so I took my other ship app. This morning I did Vitality. It was just five minutes before, and it was really, really great, right? So I feel like 
the the benefit of doing these things is that you start a new habit, you start a new routine, and then you start to need it because it gives you that extra energy in during the day. It helps you get that extra focus during the day, and it's cumulative, right? So it's not like you know you just do it once and then you're going to get these benefits. Yes, you're going to get those immediate benefits if you do it in the morning and you do those power breath work th exercises, which is awesome. Um, but then when you're doing it every single day and you're making a habit of it, it is amazing what starts to happen, right? So now I'm doing it in the morning and I'm doing it in the evening. You know, it's so hard for so many of us to kind of turn off our minds at night, right? The whole monkey mind thing. And I think that the breath work, you know, for some people it's meditation, for some people it's reading, for others it could be yoga, whatever it means to just kind of calm down our bodies. I think in addition to all of that, the breath work is really awesome because you're physically slowing down your breath, right? And it's great because it's almost for those people who may have difficulty in meditating, this might be a great option for you um, because you're counting, right? And so it's, you're not, it's harder to have your mind wander basically. And it's also guided. Other works, um, exercises are all guided or not all of them, but most of them are all guided, which for me, I really like. Um, so then my mind doesn't wander, right? So I'm just counting my breaths, whether it's the box breath or it's the power breath, whatever it may be. Um, and it really, really works well. And I love doing it in the morning. So you could do it for like a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is, the, the time slot that you have, just do it every single day for a week. See how you feel. See if you're looking forward to it. Seeing if, you know, if you're finding that you, it changes your day just a little bit, you know, having intention, setting intention for your day is super important. It's a small little thing, but when you do it every single day, it just changes everything. It's really super amazing and it's super, super easy, easy way to incorporate. Does not take that much time, but the most difficult thing to do is to actually just start. So you just got to start. Um, so I challenge you to try to do this for a week. I'm going to put the links down below. Try it, see how you feel. I feel fantastic. I'm so glad that I did this for myself um, because not only it benefits me, but it also benefits everybody else that I'm around all day long, right? So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Modern Aging.